Hey, it's Mr. Johns. I want to say hi to everybody. Uh, I realize I am not a uh, an art teacher or an art expert, but I do enjoy drawing and painting. And because I teach technology and computer science classes, um, I like to kind of integrate um, those skills and talents. And I know um, you guys are hanging out at home, playing video games, uh, eating junk food, maybe. Um, and maybe looking for some things to do. So I thought I would touch base and let you know some of the things that I've been doing while quarantined here uh, at home. Um, kind of let you know what tech teachers do when they have uh, free time. So uh, for me, it's been um, definitely challenging, um, but I kind of stay at home most of the time anyway. And I'm on my computer or my um, PlayStation or out in my shed working on projects. So for me, um, Although it's still scary and it's um, been challenging for sure, not going to school and seeing you guys um, every day, which I love. It's my favorite thing. Um, I've been passing my time with hobbies. And so I thought of today I'd share um, some of the drawings I've been doing. So I I've always done art, but never been great at it, never been happy um, with it. But I discovered this new style. It's called line and wash, which basically just means sketches with a pen and then some watercolor. The cool thing is you don't have to be great and uh, I've been pretty happy with the results and so this uh, up on the screen here is just kind of an example of a sketch right um, and I did it off of a tutorial just to give me some ideas and the guy's name is Peter Schiller Schiller H sorry S H E E L E R uh, you can look him up online and he has a bunch of tutorials and you can just follow he does it quickly which I love because I like to sketch things like in five or ten minutes uh, here's a finished one that I did a couple weeks ago um, so same kind of concept um, just pen um, and I looked online just did a Google image search of like I think I typed in colorful buildings or colorful row houses I think was the search and so this is uh, I think someplace in France um, so here what I did is just sketch quickly and don't and didn't worry about it being perfect and you know in in tech class we do some perspective drawing and um, while um, that is what I like to do um, I decided to go with this style which is almost front view just the front view facing um, so I didn't do any perspective um, techniques with two point perspective little dots on the paper none of that so literally just uh, drew rectangles and um, when I was done used um, watercolor pens and the pens are pretty bright as you can see and these are pens you can buy at uh, art stores um, something like Michaels or uh, uh, something like that so really bright probably a little bit too bright but that was the look I was going for and uh, pens are really easy They're, it's like watercolor but no water you just kind of slop it on there and um, I liked it it's okay not great um, this particular one I titled Meridian um, I drove just to get out of the house um, last week to um, downtown Meridian and there's just a, a row of buildings um, on Idaho Street I believe and this is what they look like so again um, I took a picture with my phone went home um, just grabbed a piece of this is watercolor paper I've tried it on normal paper and and the 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 sky doesn't work very well you need watercolor paper uh, you can get it at Walmart um, just get watercolor paper and the water kind of soaks in a little bit and gives it kind of the cool cloud effect um, so here again I just sketched the building straight on nothing fancy D didn't worry about anything being not perfect um, and then um, did the sky with just a little bit of blue and water and kind of splashed it on get the paper wet first so it kind of runs and soaks in a little bit um, and then this particular style um, always has um, power poles and power lines which kind of gives it an old-timey look and so um, this one I like better and I like the colors so I used watercolor um, paints for this and you can use either um, tubes of paint which you can get anywhere from a dollar or two up to ten or fifteen dollars a, a color um, or you can just use the little pan paints they're called you know they're just the rectangles that you just get wet and I've used those too so in this particular one these are a little bit nicer quality paints, so the colors are a little more subtle which I liked um, same thing here so this one a little blurry sorry about that 
Um, this is one of my favorites, and again, it's off of a tutorial, um, Peter Scheeler, and there are a f several several people like him online. You could just Google search, um, and my dad is a, a, an artist as well. He's really good, and I'm uh, trying to follow in his footsteps. He was an architect, so like I told most of my students, and so his buildings are perfect. Uh, mine are not, um, but his trademark um, has always been three birds in the sky, so I started doing that recently as kind of a He's still around, but as a kind of a tribute to him. Um, these colors again, this is a quick sketch. Um, uh, power poles, let them, let them lean. Um, don't worry about anything being perfect. And I think I'm kind of a perfectionist. And once I stopped trying to be a perfect painter, which I wasn't, um, and just let myself just sketch and draw and whatever happens, happens. Been, I've been, and that's what's happened over this, this last couple weeks is I've discovered this style that has kind of freed me up and, and given me something to play with, which is super, super cool. So um, these are, um, again, watercolor paints, and you just kind of let it run. You get the buildings wet first, and then you apply the paint. Um, it's called wet on wet, um, and it allows the colors to kind of um, uh, move around a little bit, which makes it so it's not just gray. It's kind of a splotchy um, kind of effect. So all right, so this one is not great. Don't love this one. This was earlier on, like three weeks ago, I think. Um, the cool thing about this is I actually went to Google. I was watching a show called Port Protection Alaska. And I think it's on, don't remember what it's on, on TV somewhere. Um, and it's a really cool place, and it's a cool show, too. I think it's on DirecTV. Um, so if you have that, look it up. Um, just about people who live up in Alaska, um, kind of off on their own. And um, I actually use Google Earth to go search some of the houses up there. And so these three houses are up there, but they don't sit right next to each other. I just um, took screenshots and um, used those as references and then painted them together. So um, the sketches, I think, are decent. Um, the colors, not so great. Uh, I think these. this is when I used like the cheap little dollar store watercolor pans. So the colors, you can see the difference between that and that. Um, so those are the $7 um, tubes of paint and this is the really cheap watercolor paint. So it gives it a different feel for sure. Um, but whatever you have, you have, right? So um, here's another one. This is with the cheap paint. And again, you can kind of see the quality. Um, I like the drawing. So again, this is a Peter Schiller tutorial. I don't make this stuff up. I'm not that talented. So I need to start with an idea and uh, go from there. And just a quick sketch. The colors aren't great. Again, cheap watercolor, but it's okay, right? It's okay. Gives you something to do. Um, so this particular one, um, Idaho City, if you've been there, um, I had an idea of doing like a series of, of drawings. I don't know if I'll get there. Uh, I think it was based on the one I did in Meridian, um, which I kind of thought represented Meridian. I haven't done Boise yet. There's a lot of buildings to consider um, for Boise, a lot of historical old buildings. But Idaho City, you know, has a ser you know, has a, a six or seven kind of well-known um, buildings. And so I, I um, was going to drive there, decided not to. Um, so I just used Google Earth and Street View and took screenshots uh, and looked up pictures also. And so from the left to the right, um, the left building there is, I think, like the, it's the oldest... Um, oh, now I'm not going to remember. It's the oldest. Um, oh, it's one of those groups that the old guys with the funny hats wear. Um, anyway, can't remember the name. Uh, it's the oldest standing one in America, which I didn't know. Um, built in 1865. Um, some of you may know exactly what I um, am trying to say, but I can't think of it right now. Um, it has a, a, a bell tower next to it. And then the one next to that is the fire station where they kept um, like, a, like a cart with a hose. And you literally would hook it up to horses and pull it to a house on fire. And it's still standing. And the third one, obviously, is the school built in 1891. It's now the city hall, but it's still there. It's actually up on a hill, um, but I just drew it down flat with these others. And then the Boise Basin Merck is the next one built in 1865 also. Um, things were booming in Idaho City in 1865. Most of these buildings were built that year. So silver was, uh, and, and different minerals were huge. And it was, I think, one of the biggest cities in the country at the time. So like a major gold rush. Uh, and then everybody left once it was gone. 
So that Boise Basin Mercantile building is still sitting just like that. And then the building on the right that doesn't look like it goes, have you seen it? Um, it's way up on the end of the road, the main street as you enter Idaho City, and it's just a kind of an antique place, but it's been built onto and added onto and just a bunch of weird, it's interesting, it's a cool place. So I had to add it, it doesn't really go with the picture, but it definitely represents Idaho City. So. Um, that's about it. Uh, my next uh, video is going to be on my Lego um, city that I'm working on. So if you're into Legos, stay tuned and I'll share what I've got going there. So keep busy, find something to draw, paint, do, build, uh, create, um, and hopefully I will be seeing you soon.